friends, first off, I would like to apologize that this video is going up so late. I had filmed it before the month was over and I was very excited. I was like, this is going to go up on June 1st and I'm going to be on top of schedule. And then I filmed the video and edited it and then my computer was completely out of space. And so when I tried to save it, my hard drive freaked out and the video got completely lost and then I think my mom accidentally deleted the clips off of the camera and so we're gonna go ahead and redo this video and that is why it's going up so late and I just would like to apologize for that. So this is going to be my May wrap-up. I'm gonna tell you all of the books that I read in May and if you saw my last video I had I think 11 books in my TBR and that was just completely unrealistic apparently but it wasn't because I read 12 books and I'm very happy about it. I'm just not realizing they're backwards and this is gonna make things difficult. Okay, anyways, so we're going to go ahead and get into this big stack of books and talk about all of the books that I read in the month of May. So the first book that I read in May was Cress. I gave this book a 5 out of 5 stars, but then again, I'm giving most every book in the Lunar Chronicles a 5 out of 5 stars. I loved that we got to see more of the world. I like that we got to see, like, different parts of it. It wasn't just New Beijing and some of Luna. Like, we got to see more of the entire world, and I just really enjoy that the consistency throughout the world building is throughout this entire series and nothing seems too choppy. It all just kind of flows very nicely. And I was very excited from the end of this book to see where Winter was going to get into. So the next book that I read was Fairest. I gave this book, I think, a four out of five stars. Um, it, I just wasn't completely intrigued the entire time. Then again, I may just be kind of biased because who likes Lavana? Like, I couldn't give Lavana five stars. I don't know, but I think the main reason wasn't me being petty. It was just I wasn't completely wrapped up in the story the entire time. I read this book to find out like why Lavana was doing what she was doing, and I just I still don't feel any sympathy for her. Like even everything that happened in this book, I don't feel any sympathy, and I'm not going to talk about it too much because I'm going to do a Stars Above and Fairest book talk all in one video. So I'm just going to say that I gave this book a four out of five stars, and then I moved on to Stars Above. So next I read Stars Above. It's kind of difficult for me to tell you like what my entire rating was for the book because I rated each story differently and I'll talk about that in the book talk also. Um, overall I really enjoyed it. You don't have to read the stories in this book to kind of get a wrap up on the entire series. I'm just a sucker for this series so I went ahead and read it kind of interweavingly with the series how it's like not like chronologically kind of. There's certain stories that you can't read like before and after certain books so I tried to do it to that schedule as much as possible. I think I messed up a little bit, but that's okay because I really really enjoyed it and I can never get enough of these characters or the world that they have grown up in. I just flipped all the books for better access and now they're upside down and it looks really weird, so just try to ignore that part. So finishing up the Lunar Chronicles, I read Winter by Marissa Meyer and I absolutely adored this book. This book got a 5 out of 5 stars. I liked that the story felt very closed, if that makes sense. Like, the closure of this book was very good. It was possibly one of my favorite endings to an entire series that I've ever read. I just felt like we really got to see closure with all of the characters, and even if you didn't, then there was a story in Stars Above that kind of wrapped it up even more. So, I was really very happy with this story, and I'm kind of not okay with the fact that it's over. But I can't wait until she releases Heartless, I believe that's it, with the Red Queen and Alice in Wonderland. I'm very excited for that book. Next, I got around to reading The Hidden Oracle in The Trials of Apollo by Rick Riordan. I was very happy with this book. I liked that the series itself seems like the best way to wrap up the Percy Jackson series and the Heroes of Olympus series because it just, it's kind of been flowed secretly through the backsides of the book. Backsides, I'm sorry. That was inappropriate. Um, through, <laughs> through the books, it's kind of just always been there, the storyline, without us even realizing it. I liked that we got to see it from a point of view who already knew about the world because it's similar to Cassandra Clare where we always see new characters being introduced to the world but not really a character that's already been in the world for their entire life and I also loved Apollo's narrating. He was just hilarious and he wasn't a reliable narrator which I really enjoyed. I like reading from an unreliable viewpoint because then you get to form your own point of view and I just I really enjoyed this book and the humor was incredible and it was just enough Percy to please the soul. Next, I'm going to add these all up together. I read Hex Hall, Smellbound, and Demon Glass. I said that backwards. Hex Hall, Demon Glass, and Spellbound, all by um, Rachel Hawkins. I read this book, um, kind or the series, kind of as like a sentimental thing because I read them in middle school and I wanted to read them in my last month of high school. And I gave every single book a four out of five stars. I really got wrapped up in the characters. I just, I find, kind of felt 
like the last book was lacking in the final battle scene and the final wrap up of everything. I felt like it was just very rushed and it didn't feel completely closed and I'm still kind of wondering what's going on with these characters. So she does have another series with one of the Brannons, so I may read that, but I'm not sure yet. But overall, I really enjoyed the series. I'm happy that I got to read them all. And if you're looking for a story with very like mystical features and werewolves and vampires and warlocks and all of that magic system, then I think this series would be great to pick up. Next, I read A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass, and I gave this book a five out of five stars, 100%. All the way and I cannot talk about this book because if I do then this video will turn into a book talk instead of a wrap-up video and that's not what we want so we're just gonna leave it at this I think I'm going to do a book talk but I'm honestly not sure um, if you want to talk about this book with me add me on Goodreads and we can just have a message thread back and forth continuously talking about this book because I could honestly talk about this book for years on end and we're just gonna leave it at that five out of five stars Next, I read The Walled City by Ryan Grodden. I had read Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Grodden a couple months ago, and I'm just now learning that it's not a standalone series. It's a duology. Um, now I look like a dork, because in the video that I talked about it, I was like, it's a great standalone, because it ends, and you can kind of decide like what's ending with the book, and it's your own decision, and it's not your own decision, because there's another one, and I think it's called Blood for Blood. So, I'm sorry that I misled you, Maybe I did it, maybe all of you knew, and I just looked like a complete idiot, but oh well, I'm really excited to read the book. Now, on to The Walled City. I've heard that she did research, and she tried to incorporate the research into the book as much as she could, but she wasn't able to completely because it really was, The Walled City was like a real place, and it was somewhere that people lived, and they had normal lives, and they went to work, and they went home, and they had all of the normal things that we go through every day, and it wasn't just this place of complete gruesome acts day after day. But in the author's defense, she has said that she could not label this as historical fiction just because she did research but she didn't necessarily incorporate all of the research into the story. So I wish we would have been able to see the more natural side of this life, but at the same time I can understand why she wouldn't put it in the book because this book was focusing on the action of the series and kind of all of the hardships that the people went through that lived in this city. I believe I ended up giving this book a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I did get bored at some points, but I liked the way that the writing style was set up. I don't know if I'm going to be able to explain this. So the book was set up where it said like two days and then one day and then the day of. And I love books that are set up like that because it just keeps you reading. You're like, ooh, what's happened at this one day mark? And so you just keep reading. I just think it's a great way to intrigue your readers and just really wrap them up in the stories and that completely worked for me. So if you're looking for a quick paced read, I believe this one is a standalone. Don't hold me to that because I messed up last time. Um, I think that this group, this would be a great book to pick up. Next, I finally got around to reading a book by Patrick Ness, which was The Rest of Us Just Live Here. I realized that I hadn't read any contemporary novels, and so I was kind of in the mood for a contemporary. And so this is like half contemporary. It's kind of, but not really. So if you're looking for a book and you still want some fantasy elements, but not completely fantasy, then The Rest of Us Just Live Here is a really great book to read. I liked that, I don't know, we got to focus on like real life of people if that makes sense. And they were all seniors and they're going into college so I like related to them. I felt like their stresses and their worries and I, I don't know it was a good time to read the book. I liked that I got wrapped up in their character storylines and I really cared about what happened to them and I was very worried about like oh no who's gonna go to college? What's happening in this relationship? And I kind of just felt like I was watching a reality TV show but like actual reality not fake reality. Did any of that make sense? I don't know. I think I ended up giving this book a 4 out of 5 stars, and that's just because it's very difficult for me to give contemporary novels 5 stars because I am a fantasy dork. That's that's my only excuse, and it's not even a good one. And lastly, I read Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. Moyes? Um, we're gonna go with Moyes. I read this because I want to see the movie, and that's... A pretty awful motivator but it's my motivator I really wasn't sure what I was getting myself into with this book I didn't know anything about it and I usually don't watch trailers which sounds stupid that I wanted to watch the movie without seeing the trailer but I'm scared that trailers are gonna give things away so on YouTube I'll like mute it real quick and then change tabs because I don't want to know what's happening I just heard it was gonna be a movie heard that it was based off a book and then picked up the book to read it I ended up giving this book like a four point 
seven five out of five stars. Once again, not being able to give contemporary novels five stars. By the way, if you know any five star contemporary novels, please let me know because I would love to read it. I want to read a five star contemporary. Anyways, so I gave this book a 4.75 out of five stars because I felt like the beginning dragged a bit, but once we finally got into the story and the dynamics of the story and honestly like the dialogue, just the dialogue really hit home for me. Like the dialogue was great. I loved my hair is in the book. I loved the <laughs> the just the character relationships in this book are very strong and I I don't know. Character relationships, dialogues, character dynamics with each other, that's like number one in a book for me. I really, really enjoyed this book. I'm not sure if I'm going to read Me After You yet, just because I've heard that the finale for this book like kinda like punches you in the gut, but like in a good way. And I don't know if after you punches you in the gut in a good way or a bad way, or if it punches you in the gut at all. So if you've read both books, please let me know if I should read the next one. Not finishing a series feels kind of weird to me, but at the same time, if it doesn't have the same ending as this one, I can understand why people wouldn't read the next book. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. Also, real quick side note, I know that having the movie cover on the book is absolutely awful. I just didn't feel like paying more money for the hardback cover with like the pretty font and the red writing and everything. Um, but Amelia Clark is on this one, so it's okay. Because Amelia Clark. Anyways, that wasn't book related. That is going to be all for my video today. I hope you all enjoyed it and you have a great time wherever the time zone is that you are. That didn't make any sense. Anyways, <laughs> thank you for watching.